Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. And today I wanted to talk about some of my favourite works of historical fiction set in the Victorian period. So as most of you will know, I really love the Victorian period and I also really love historical fiction and I especially love historical fiction set in the Victorian period. So today, as I am this month hosting a historical fiction readathon all about reading historical fiction, I thought I would talk about some really wonderful books that are set in the Victorian period. So I have a bunch of books to talk about today, um, all of which are set in the Victorian period, all of which I really enjoy. I wrote the list and it didn't seem that long, but the stack of books I held up seemed quite big. So um, we will see. I'm just going to go through a bunch of books that I really, really like, um, all of which are set in the Victorian period. So I'm going to go in no particular order, but I'm going to start off with the authors where I have multiple books of theirs to talk about. So I'm going to start off with the very amazing author Sarah Waters. So I have three of her books here to mention. Um, these are her three books which are set in the Victorian period. In general, I just love Sarah Waters hugely. I think she's a wonderful writer. Um, and she writes about the Victorian period, about Victorian London, about Victorian gender and sexuality in a fantastic way. Um, and I love all of her books hugely. So just to tell you a little bit about um, these three books. Fingersmith begins in 1862 and we're following a pickpocket named Sue and what happens when um, she gets caught up in a scheme to um, to kind of cheat a wealthy woman out of her money and everything goes on from there and there are so many twists and turns in this book just so many um, so I'm not going to tell you any more about it but it's really really good I would definitely recommend it I would also hugely recommend a Tipping the Velvet it's a wonderful kind of like adventure coming of age story um, about a young woman in Victorian Britain who gets involved in like the musical scene it explores gender and sexuality there's a love story it's just amazing I just hugely hugely recommend Tipping the Velvet it is fantastic um, and then I would also really really recommend Affinity. So Affinity is set partly in a woman's prison in the Victorian period and we're following a woman who is going to visit that prison um, in order to kind of like help the people there and she ends up forming a, a friendship possibly more with someone who is incarcerated in the prison who claims that um, she is a medium and that the reason why she's in prison wasn't her fault it was all to do with spirits um, and everything kind of goes on from there and it's wonderful and I love it very very much. Sarah Waters is just fantastic I highly highly recommend her if you like the Victorian period and are interested in, in historical fiction set in the Victorian period you absolutely need to read some Sarah Waters. The next author I want to mention is Diane Setfield and I have two of her books here to mention and um, so this is Bellman and Black. Bellman and Black follows a man from his childhood into his adulthood um, who ends up kind of starting this this emporium of mourning wear, this kind of business created out of grief and mourning. And he, as a younger man, makes a mysterious bargain with a man who may or may not be real. Um, and everything is a little bit ghostly and a little bit mysterious and very, very wonderful. So I would highly, highly recommend this. It is a really fantastic read. And I would also hugely recommend Once Upon a River by Diane Setfield, which is a fantastic, fantastic book. This is set in the Victorian period as is everything in this video um, and it is set chiefly like focusing around a pub um, which is a pub where lots of people come to tell stories but one day everyone finds themselves in the middle of a story when a man crashes through the door holding um, a young girl in his arms um, and they both seem to have been injured they've been in the river um, the man is injured but seems alive but the little girl is dead until a few minutes later she isn't and everything kind of goes on from there and it's just wonderful and I highly highly recommend it. And I feel like the way Diane Setfield looks at Victorian society in this book is just fantastic. I love it very, very much and I would hugely recommend it. Next, I want to mention The Wonder by Emma Donoghue, which is one of my favourite historical fiction books ever. This is set in Victorian Ireland um, and follows a nurse who moves from England to Ireland in order to... Um, care for this little girl who claims that she has been existing without food and um, so she is claiming that she has survived without food for a very long time um, and this nurse has been sent there to kind of watch her to see whether or not it's true and everything goes on from there um, and the nurse soon finds herself much more involved with the little girl than she expected to be and it's just fantastic like it's so gripping it takes place over a really short amount of time um, but it's so powerful and so like tense and amazing um, and I just highly highly recommend it it is a wonderful wonderful book it really looks interestingly at like Victorian society and culture um, and ideology and kind of superstition and religion um, and it's just fantastic so highly highly recommend this it is well worth a read. I also want to, to mention, of course, The Watchmaker of Phil the Grist Street by Natasha Pulley, which is pretty much my favourite work of historical fiction ever. I love this book so much. It is so good and I just love it very, very, 
very, very much. So this is set in 1880s London, um, and we're following a man called Thaniel, who is a clerk in the civil service, um, when one day he gets home from work and finds a pocket watch on his bed, and he doesn't know how it got there, um, but suddenly he has this pocket watch, and through various circumstances, this pocket watch ends up saving his life. So he tries to work out where this pocket watch has come from, and he ends up meeting the man who made this pocket watch, who is a Japanese man living in London called Keita Mori, and everything kind of goes on from there, and I just think this book is hugely fantastic. I really love the way this book engages with the Victorian period and Victorian history and the way that it looks both at like the kind of more complicated more serious side of Victorian society and you know kind of political and cultural issues within Victorian society but it also looks at like the weird quirkiness of Victorian society and the way this book has fun with clockwork and stuff like that is really really enjoyable. I also really like that this is set in quite late Victorian London because I feel like the Victorian period that a lot of us have in our heads is very much like the Dickensian period of the 18th 40s and 1850s like when we think Victorian I think we think a Christmas Carol and a Christmas Carol is from 1843 like it's five years into the Victorian period it's really early Victorian and I feel like the 1880s and the bit of the Victorian period that Natasha Pulley is looking at it's quite different and that's quite fun because I feel like a lot of historical fiction um, set in the Victorian period is set earlier in the Victorian period and I really really like how Natasha Pulley looks at the 1880s I think it's fantastic so highly highly recommend this it's a wonderful wonderful book really really fun Victorian set historical read bit of an adventure bit of magic potentially going on and it's just hugely hugely wonderful so I highly highly recommend it Talking of historical fiction with a little bit of magic, I also wanted to mention The Gifts by Liz Heider. This is a fantastic historical fiction book that came out earlier this year. This is set in 1840, chiefly in London, um, and it follows various characters who are all linked together by a new rumour circulating through London about um, fallen angels and mysterious figures with wings. And we're basically following a group of women who are connected by these rumours, and also one man, a surgeon, um, who wants to find a way to kind of prove his worth. And it's a book about Victorian London and gender and obsession um, with the most amazing, amazing characters. And I just hugely, hugely love it. Um, I used to work at Manila Press, who are the publishers of this, and I was very lucky to work on this um, in its very, very early stages. And I absolutely love it so much. Um, and it's very exciting that it's out of the bar. So I highly, highly recommend this. This is a fantastic book set in the Victorian period. If you like historical fiction set in the Victorian period, you have to read this. It is truly, truly amazing. I also wanted to mention The Doll Factory by Elizabeth McNeil, another one wonderful book set in the Victorian period. Um, so this is set in 1850 and 1851 around the Great Exhibition, which is something that I really, really enjoy. Um, and we're following three characters, um, a man who is a kind of like collector and taxidermist called Silas, um, a young woman called Iris who works in a doll factory but really wants to be an artist, um, and a young street urchin called Albie. Um, and we're following how all these characters are connected um, and how Iris's life kind of changes when one day she meets a painter who offers to teach her how to paint in exchange for her being a model for him. I feel like the doll factory has a lot of themes in common with the gifts in that they're both very much about the position of women within Victorian society, about kind of obsession and power. And also I guess like the Victorian drive to like make a science of things and like catalogue things. I don't really know how to quite explain that. But there's something very Victorian about that theme. Um, and I think The Doll Factory is just, just an incredible book. So I'd highly, highly recommend this. It's really, really wonderful. And I'm also very excited to read at some point soon Elizabeth McNeil's second book, Circuit of Wonders, which sounds amazing too. I also wanted to recommend this. This is In the Blink of an Eye by Ali Bacon, which is another wonderful book set in the Victorian period. This is set in Victorian Scotland. Um, it begins in 1843. And it's all about um, the development of early photography, chiefly focusing on um, a photographer from Edinburgh called David Octavia Hill, who was, I think, a real life figure, but it's not told from his perspective, it's kind of told from the perspectives of all of the women that surround him. Um, and I really love this book for a lot of reasons. It is a fantastic read. Um, it's really, really interesting to look at Victorian Scotland, because I feel like as you may have noticed, um, an awful lot of books that are set in the Victorian period are set in Victorian London. And while I love to read about Victorian London, I'm from London and I love the Victorian period and Victorian London is fascinating. It is also really nice to read some historical fiction that is not set in Victorian London or in a big spooky Victorian house, which is the other setting for Victorian historical fiction a lot of the time. So a book set in Victorian Edinburgh is really, really cool. But also I find the development of photography so interesting. This book looks so interestingly at the development of early photography, as well as looking at 
at Victorian society and class and gender and so many interesting things. And it's just really, really worth a read. I would highly, highly recommend In the Blink of an Eye. It's really fantastic. Um, not as well known as quite a lot of the other books I'm mentioning today. So I highly, highly recommend this one. Really, really worth your time. Next, I want to mention The Mysteries of Glass by CG. Now, it has been about 15 years since I read The Mysteries of Glass. Um, so my memory of it is not very fresh. But I read this as a teenager and I remember really, really loving it and thinking that it was a really interesting book about the Victorian period, which at that time I was really coming to love and coming to be fascinated by. So The Mysteries of Glass is set in 1861 um, in Herefordshire and it's about a young curate um, who ends up falling in love with the vicar's wife. Um, and it's all about the kind of relationship between them as well as about Victorian society and the kind of constraints of it. As I said, it's been a very long time since I've read The Mysteries of Glass, but I remember loving it very much as a teenager. And I think it is probably like the first work of historical fiction set in the Victorian period that I ever read. So I thought I would mention it today. Next, I wanted to mention this book, which is Miss Austen by Jill Hornby. Now, um, Jane Austen herself was not alive in the Victorian period, um, but this book, Miss Austen, is about her sister, Cassandra. I mean, it is chiefly set in the Victorian period. It's set in 1840, although there are flashbacks to before. So I almost forgot to include this because in my head, it's like a Regency historical novel, but actually it is set in the Victorian period. It's set in 1840, so we're putting it in this video. And this is another favorite historical fiction of mine, which I just love hugely. It is about Cassandra Austen, um, who decades after the death of her sister is looking back on her life. And I feel like one of the things I love about this book is how it talks about like, the importance of unimportant people and the importance of unimportant women, especially. You know, we're all aware of Jane Austen and Jane Austen did amazing things um, and wrote fantastic books. But this book also celebrates the fact that Cassandra was important too and that to be a woman at this point in time who didn't do amazing standout important things but just led like a, a life and made a difference to people was also really important and valuable and I just I don't know I just feel like it celebrates quiet lives in a really fantastic way and I would highly highly recommend it. Another book that is bordering on being pre-Victorian is this. This is Death and Mr Pickwick by Stephen Jarvis. Now this book begins in 1836 which is the year before the Victorian period begins um, but it does span forward um, and back in time so bits of it are set in the Victorian period and you know 1836 is a year before the Victorian period. We'll, we'll let it be. I feel like this book is in some ways a love letter to the Victorian novel. So, you know, we're going to include it in this video. I love this book very much. Um, it is wonderful. It is big. It is chunky, but it is absolutely worth your time, um, especially if you like Dickens. It is this fantastic, sprawling, meandering, wonderful gem of a book, um, which is all about the real life figure um, who was the illustrator of the first few parts of the Pickwick Papers um, and then didn't continue with the rest of the Pickwick Papers. It's all about his life um, and fictionalised things around his life, but also about so many other figures. So Dickens does appear as a historical figure in this book, um, but there's an awful lot of other things going on as well. And it is just fantastic. It's very, very Dickensian. So if you like Dickens, you will really enjoy this. And it's a great fun read. And really looks interestingly at like art and literature in the 19th century as well. I also wanted to recommend The Key and the Lock by Beth Underdown. Um, I read this quite recently it only came out a few months ago um, so I have spoken about this on my channel quite recently um, but this book is set partly in 1918 obviously after the Victorian period, a fair way after the Victorian period, and partly in 1888. Um, so we are following a woman called Ivy who in 1918 is looking back on the events of 1888 and something that happened when she was a young woman um, which has affected the course of her life and has kind of been preying on her ever since. So we're both looking at kind of the history of the First World War um, and how her life has changed following that and the death of her son in the war, but we're also looking back on the Victorian period and a bit of a mystery that happened all those years ago. This is a wonderful book. I think it looks really fantastically at these two like periods in time and like links them together in a really wonderful way. Um, and I really like the way it looks at the Victorian period. If you like a bit of a Victorian spooky gothic stuff, then you will love The Key in the Lock. It is a really, really wonderful read and definitely one I would recommend. And finally, <laughs> One book more, I have a short story collection to recommend you, which is The Haunting Season. Um, so this is Ghostly Tales for Long Nights. This came out in 2021, um, and it has short stories in it by Bridget Collins, Imogen Hermes Gower, Kieran Moorwood Hargrave, Andrew Michael Hurley, Jess Kidd, Elizabeth McNeil, Natasha Pulley, and Laura Purcell. Um, and the majority of these stories are set in the Victorian period. I think all but one are arguably set in the Victorian period. And there's only one that is definitely not set in the Victorian period. I think there are some of the others where you could probably have an argument about whether they're set in the Edwardian or the Georgian period, but 
There's a lot of Victorian vibes going on in here and I love it very much. These are some fantastic ghost stories by some of the best British historical fiction writers um, and I really, really love this collection. I feel like there are wonderful stories in here which kind of, I don't know, do exactly what a good Victorian ghost story does where it's a ghost story and it's spooky and there's supernatural stuff happening but actually it's all really social criticism about Victorian society which is what I love about an actually Victorian ghost story and what I love about a historical ghost story set in the Victorian period too. So I'd highly highly recommend The Haunting Season, it's an absolutely wonderful read and yeah if you like historical fiction set in the Victorian period you'll find many stories in here to enjoy. So there we go, that's a big pile of Victorian set historical fiction. Do let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them. Let me know if you have any other recommendations for um, Victorian set historical fiction. I just really love historical fiction set in this period in time and I'm always keen to read more. And I think that's all for now. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.